yeah so hello everyone well well done on like you know being up and awake for this like really appreciate it taking the time to kind of do this um basically i'm going to run through the early very early stage of my career and kind of like the strange journey i've gone on um to get to where i am and that will basically go from i'm going to briefly touch on what i did at university so first second and third year kind of what i thought i was doing and what i do differently and um then take it through to graduation where it's like kind of how i prep myself to um to kind of position myself and put myself in the position to get together get a job straight out of uni um, in film and television. So it's kind of like how I used university in the best way, or the best way for me to find a job in, in what I studied. Um, and then I'm gonna go through on how that kind of, how that journey took me over a two year period of doing editing, uh, and then how I ended up going into where I am now, which is currently in the camera department. So hopefully this will appeal to a few of you because it's kind of like touching on production, post-production and on set work and then kind of kit room stuff. So I'm going to try and cover it all and stay on track. And yeah, then we'll have some questions at the end. So please have some questions. Oh yeah, here we go. So who am I? So I graduated from ARU. Um, I did film and television production. Uh, under Sophie Jackson, taught by David Scott. So um, I basically, my background, like before university was, I'd like always loved filmmaking, um, made a lot of rubbish YouTube videos, which unfortunately are still on the internet. Um, so I've made a lot of videos, I made a lot of content before coming to university, which um, kind of was my hobby. And then that translated into education. So it was kind of like taking it to that next level where it was like, OK, now I know I want to learn how to do this properly. And that was right from A level, I would say, where we did media studies. Um, and although that was theoretical, like we didn't get to do a lot of practical, it set me up well for um, coming to university where like you actually got a bit more hands on with with kit. Uh, my I thought it was good to outline my personal goal for like where I would love to get to um, from the day from day one of get, coming into university always wanted to direct that's what I kind of focused on at university and I've not wavered from that at any point I still want to get to that point so I think that's important to outline to you guys that although I I've, I've kind of fallen into these other roles it doesn't take away from the fact that I'm still aiming for that and I still you know see myself at some point achieving that, even if I'm 50 <laughs> and that's when I get there, that's when I get there. Like I, I, I do not mind. That is just kind of always going to be the, the goal for me um, to at least direct one film. So I thought I'd just outline that so that you know what, I, what I'm kind of going to go on to try and do. Um, it also might make some of the stuff I've done here make more sense. So yeah, my aim, my aim for this talk is to hopefully you who are the, the students who are currently like in the middle of their studies or approaching the end of their studies to kind of be like, don't worry, it, it, it is going to be OK and that you can get a job. Um, and it's not down to luck, like you do create your own luck. Um, I'm going to cover kind of how to get the most out of your university studies, even if you're coming towards the end. It's kind of like I want to go through how you can set yourself up well and use what you've already done. Um, yeah, the expectations of the jobs that you will be finding, I think, is very important. So how how are you going to or what you're going to be doing or what kind of jobs you're going to be getting and kind of how to make the most of those as well. Um, and also the most important thing, where the hell do you find these jobs? Um, and I'm basically going to be going through some of the places that I went to and how I ended up securing some positions and some, some roles. So I'm hoping that that would be useful. And I'm going to go through kind of my, my story to hopefully show you how I went about, went about this. So if we just go to the next one. 
Yeah, so university, let's just start there. Uh, I thought it was important to outline kind of where you can kind of be at, uh, or where I saw myself being at looking back now, like kind of what each year was kind of like for me in a really brief summary. So like when you're coming into university, you can kind of be in two places of like, I don't have a clue about any of this. Uh, like you have never touched the camera. Um, I just think I like, you know, I like films. I think it's something I'm interested in. Or I, where I kind of was, it's like you've been making, you've been making stuff previously. You know what you want to do. You know what your aims are, but you're still really terrible at what you're doing. And I think that's kind of like where most people kind of sit, you know, two extremes, but you're somewhere in the middle. It doesn't matter, like you're somewhere on that scale where it's like you're coming to university to hopefully make some stuff. And basically my advice would be um, if any of you aren't already at university um, or uh, are thinking of starting university, it's a great place to kind of just start making all those ideas. And hopefully if you have been, if you're coming towards the end of your studies, you have got a lot of your bad ideas out the system and maybe you've made mistakes along the way that you can learn from because it's just basically getting those ideas out in first year. Um, the second year I kind of put down like when I when I was in second year it just it did feel like um, it was getting to a point where I was being I was being marked and stuff I really wanted to um, kind of produce a high quality of film um, uh, or documentary. Um, I was just trying to elevate those those productions to at least looking looking right when they were on screen. Not necessarily everything else that went with it. So it's not maybe about having a smooth production, but maybe about getting the end result you want. Um, and this was also like where I learned kind of how to be a part of a team a bit more. It was kind of like I think there's there's a there's a great opportunity in in short fiction. Uh, where you kind of get to be a part of a team for the first time, like a proper team, a, a crew where you have established roles. And I think it's just hopefully what you can take away from those years, no matter how those fil films went and the mistakes that were made, or if you're going into it, kind of um, the mistakes you will make, it's just about being part of that team, managing your expectations, being a part of a crew, um, and still being an individual creative is important, like knowing how you can add value to a film, even if it's not necessarily your script or um, or your idea, like knowing how you can use your own individual uh, skills to add value to the projects. And then third year, I think it was all about uh, kind of refining yourself. So like refining and specializing is kind of how I phrased it. It's kind of like you, you know where you you sit within uh, your role. You you kind of have decided on the role. And I think university is important for helping you try out all these roles. Um, so again, if you've not gone to university, and uh, <laughs> this isn't really chiming with you, uh, it's kind of like I would pitch university as a place where it's like you can kind of get to that point where you have some idea of a department that you want to be in, not necessarily even a role, but a, a department. Um, someone's at the door. I don't know who that is. Um, then we go, let's go back. I don't know where I am with the PowerPoint. Oh, I'm at the beginning, sick. Uh, one second. But yeah, if you get to a point where you're kind of knowing what uh, role you want to be in, um, I would say that this is the point where you kind of can bring it back to that what you had in first year. So like when you get to third year, you know your role, you know you can do a job uh, to a certain level. And I think if you can um, really reflect on what you did well, if you've already you know, made your major projects um, and focus on how you add the value to the story, um, I think that's a great kind of angle to analyze yourself when like moving on to industry. And this project as well isn't like, you. I would always stress, when I made my major project, I really did stress to my team, this is not the last film you're gonna make. Like this should be the first film you're gonna make. This is like your first step like outside of uni. 
because this will be the film that you can in that first year after uni you can you can talk about um either you know either because it's been successful or because there were mistakes made on it either way you will have that film that you can talk about and hopefully it will also help push you to make something else within that next year after uni um so yeah like basically just to recap that because i did kind of mess up the third year bit it's kind of like you want to understand your specialized role and just how you can really add value to what what you're working on from your role so it's not necessarily about you you can get stuck in another in other departments but really focus on what you can add through your role uh, or your department to tell the story um, and really try to focus on telling the story because from my personal experience when I was at university I got so caught up in everything else like the production trying to make everything run smoothly not making any mistakes um that I kind of lost sight of my story a bit and it kind of the film suffered because of that and ultimately especially if you're directing um I would definitely say don't um manage your team manage your production but you're there to tell the story and university is the best place um to do that because it's the 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 main opportunity you're going to get to tell the story you want to tell so um make sure you're just at least focused on that um because when you get out of university it's a lot harder to have that same time to devote to telling the stories you want to tell so i'd really take that opportunity okay so then we come to graduation so i know that some of you are kind of approaching this period it's it's on the horizon <laughs> so I think it's kind of summarizing on what you can do to make the most out of your final final moments at university and what you can do looking to the future. So this is kind of what I touched on before, but your fate like all your failures throughout university should not be knocking your confidence at this point. This is all stuff that you've overcome um, and it's all stuff that's great to talk to people about and I would have no shame in talking about anything you've messed up or anything that's gone wrong as long as you know you know within yourself that you've learned from it um, so an example would be if you've made a project and someone's not pushed record on the on the zoom or something like that like the you haven't got any sound um, completely fine it's, it's just it's good to like not like that's not how you're going to run your future productions you're going to make sure that that happens but it's also good that when you're in a situation when you finally get yourself in a position where you're talking to other professionals and you're you know you're joking over over lunch or whatever like you you're talking to them it's like don't shy away from having conversations where like you do highlight stuff that's gone wrong um and talk about it in a light-hearted manner it's it's really valuable that they know that you know what you've done wrong because you're going to be approaching them pretty much as a student and you're going to be approaching them you know from a lower position so that they, they do like hearing that you know previously what's not worked or even better if you have that kind of in the back of your mind of what's going wrong at uni because that is the place where you're meant to fail and there's no repercussions to your career because you're kind of in this safe bubble. Um, like that's a really, that's a really valuable thing. It's like you, you've messed up in uni, but it's not affecting your career. Um, your career hasn't started yet. So when you're out there and, um, you know, you, you're more aware of what could go wrong. Um, just make sure you're drawing just make sure you're drawing from what you what you've learned at uni and um don't let the failures kind of knock your confidence at all because that is the point that is definitely the point of university and i say that as someone who messed up continuously <laughs> uh trying to achieve a lot with um what i had and 
often aiming to aiming aiming so high would often lead to me being disappointed with what I made. But um, ultimately, looking back on it, it really did help me learn a lot. And it also meant that I had a lot to talk about and it made it seem that I had more um, experience than maybe other other people around me, even though I was a fresh graduate and they'd been in the industry a year or two. And it just helped me like kind of have that level pegging with other people um, and be able to hold those conversations and not look out my depth. So what you can do in those final moments before graduating, how to really utilize your time at uni, I think it's a great time to ask questions. So it's the, the best time where you can go to any professional you want at any level of the industry. If you can get, if you can get um, contact details through I, I would often recommend going through people's Instagrams. That's a great place to find, uh, especially DOPs, camera operators, um, and like directors. That if you that if you like someone's work, if you genuinely like someone's work, um, to the point where you are analysing it, you understand it, and you take those skills you got from uni, where you've had to write those horrible essays on breaking things down, you can use that use that knowledge to really break something down that you like and you can then contact that person and talk to them from a stu as a student. Um, they love that. They love being contacted by people that uh, love their work. So never shy away from that while you're at uni. And it's not necessarily that you're doing it to get something out of it, but if you can just, um, if you can just put across that you love, like find, find, first of all, find the work you love and then contact them and just tell them you love it or ask questions on how they did it, hoping to gain some sort of knowledge. Um, I guarantee that will get you, that will get you, um, that will at least get you the, the knowledge you need or some further understanding, especially when you're graduating and like your studies have stopped. Um, it's a great way to continue learning and to kind of start that ball rolling as a student, everyone's expecting you to ask questions and it's just a great position where you can be that vulnerable and ask whatever you want and no one's going to kind of expect you to know anything. So they happily sit you down and talk to you or give you an email reply or ask for a phone call. That's always a great way to get at least their number. Um, so it's just about using that position as a student to your benefit. Um, yeah, and then what I did, kind of coming on to what I did when I graduated, is uh, we basically had the option to do work experience. Um, and what I decided to do is go to a company called Molinaire, which is a post-production house in Soho. Because at the time I thought my best path to uh, reaching that goal I, I covered at the beginning of directing was to go through editing, uh, meet directors in the edit suite, learn from them, hopefully then get on set with someone or maybe specialise as an editor and then years down the line um, make some of my own stuff. So what I did was is I contacted post-production houses in Soho because that's kind of the hub for editing. So if you are interested in post-production or editing, I would highly recommend going and Googling on maps just post-production houses because they are always willing to bring people in um, to work there and it it also is a great chance to kind of that this is the constant buzz in Soho of celebrities uh, shoots going on um, it's just a good hub it's a good hub to be it's a good place to be especially when you're starting you're trying to find people to talk to so what I did was I went to Molinaire for a week and um, I won't lie, it was awful. <laughs> it was so much hard, like it was such long days and hard work. Um, and I don't mean the glamorous work of, oh, I had to get edits done or we had to, um, I don't know, we had to cut this and that. No, it, it was it was really working in the kitchen. Um, so you had to like basically you start in post-production you start as a runner in the post-production houses making the teas and coffees 
and there is no other way if you want to move up these big uh, companies, these big post production houses, there's no other real way of doing it. But what I will say to that is, although it's terrible, the making the teas and coffees, like after doing so much amazing stuff at university feels like, you know, a bit of a punch to the gut. It's, um, I can't stress enough that it's worth it because I know a lot of the people who I started with there while I was on work experience and I just, you know, were chatting to them. It only took them about eight months to a year before they were in a position of where they wanted to be. And I think that when you're going to graduate, you've got to think about it as you've got to position yourself in the best place to meet people. It's not necessarily about what you're doing or the role you're in. You just want to be in and around other professionals that are doing what you want to do, because at the very least, you're going to get chances to have those conversations, gain that knowledge, or even go one step better and make contacts that will actually take you on set or take you into an edit suite. So while I was there, just in one week that I was there, I got into two edit suites where I was talking to directors, I was talking to editors, um, and we were working on the title sequence for a documentary. I can't actually remember who it was. It, it was for it's basically a it was a documentary about a celebrity who had passed, and he basically wanted me to watch an opening title sequence and give my opinions on it. And bear in mind, I'm still a student at this point, so I kind of utilised what we've been taught at uni, breaking down the scene, uh, being able to pick out what I liked, and you know, that that kind of experience really is what you will get by working the teas and working on the teas and coffees is that you will get those opportunities to have those conversations. And um, yeah, editing something you want to go into, that's a great place to do it. Um, but then basically after I had that work experience, um, found it really tough, went home and thought, you know, I, I don't really want to tackle something that big. That was just me personally. Like I didn't see myself lasting eight months to a year um, doing the commute into Soho and doing the teas and coffees, getting in it. Cause I think you had to get in at 9.30. Um, I didn't see myself being able to sustain it um, because of the travel. So what I did was is I basically would li I lined up another load of work experience, but I did that for after I graduated. So I I went away because at Molinaire they offered they they kept my CV on hold. So they said you know if you ever want to come back after you can. Um, so that was always a good kind of safety net. Like okay if, it, if nothing works out, I will go there. I will commit to being a runner for eight months. Um, so, but what I did was in, in, the, in the end is I contacted other companies um, and I, this time I went for, per, I went for smaller production companies. So I went for um, people who I thought I could kind of get stuck in, get stuck in with production, maybe get to do a bit more editing because they were a smaller company. I thought I could push for that quicker and I'm not. I'm not sure to this day if if I should have um, stuck, just gone for being a runner and worked my way up slower and got to a more established position, or if I should have gone the route I did, just go for a smaller company and get editing quicker. I'm, to this day, I'm not sure which path is better. I guess it is down to kind of your personal goals. But um, I basically lined up um some work experience for the week after I graduated or no it wasn't actually graduation it was actually by the time our studies ended so I think it was around around August or something where I did a week I did a week with ad hoc films and that basically after that week in that week all I was doing was again <laughs> teas and coffees um I reorganized all their wires because that it was atrociously organized um set up a few editing suites, uh, you know, did some running jobs with them. Uh, and, you know, that was basically it for the week. But basically they kept me on after that week for another three months on a three month contract. And they said it was all down to attitude 
uh, a willingness to work like a, and not shying away from any job so they would they give you some horrific jobs at the beginning where it's just like cleaning or stuff that you you know you didn't have to do at uni you got to just focus on being creative and making the films which is why i stress telling the stories you want to tell while you're at uni but something else that i took from uni was like just that hard work and it definitely paid off to just be able to knuckle down and get on with it um and just know that it was going to pay off eventually so i basically the the first two months with ad hoc i was just a runner i was just i was just doing whatever they wanted me to do and eventually i got the opportunity where one of their staff members left and he basically a massive gap opened up where he was a producer he was an editor and he would direct uh, because it's a smaller company you end up like doing multiple roles so i was just like this is kind of my chance and when these edits came in because they ad hoc films specialized in commercials and uh, sports documentaries so we do a lot of stuff with fifa um, and EA Sports, a lot of video game stuff as well, like sports games. So an edit came in for, um, I think it was Ian Wright and uh, a player called Kaka. And they were basically just sat down interviews, talking heads, and they needed to get the edit done over the weekend. And they didn't want to pay the £400 a day you'd have to pay uh, what we would call a shit hot editor to do it. So they basically would come in over the weekend and in two days smash out an edit, but they get paid you know, near a grand for it. Um, and they didn't have the budget to do it because again, smaller company. And that's when I kind of took my, my opportunity to say that, you know, I can, I was confident I could do this edit. I was like, I can cut it for you. Uh, we can have someone review it over the weekend. I can retransfer it. I'll stay in the office until it's basically what you want. Um, and yeah, it took me longer than than um, one of those expensive editors would be would take to do it, but it saved them a lot of money, and it just meant it established that I could actually do the job. And then after that, they gave me a year contract to stay with them and do those kind of edits. And very quickly, I got to work on uh, bigger, bigger projects and give them more responsibility. So yeah, coming back to graduation um, I think it's very worth lining up work experience and doing stuff for free so that you just keep the momentum going after uni I wouldn't like don't be afraid to take a break and stop because like the industry the industry it feels like it doesn't wait for anyone but you know if you need like to look after yourself and you know that if you take a month off to kind of recharge and then you can go for it that's perfectly fine, but just know that it's, it's beneficial to line up something. Just line up something, like even if it's a week work experience, just get that ball rolling for yourself so that you don't get bogged down after uni when kind of everything stops for a bit because it's just worth knowing that you're good enough to do what I did. I know that pretty much everyone who's made it to a morning, morning call is good enough or has the drive to do it. So yeah please uh don't underestimate the value of work experience and doing stuff for free in those first like six months after uni uh so i've I put on here kind of places that you can find your first job um at this point in time i the job i got was through production base that's what i i use that site to find um the job i'm in now uh, i is you do have to pay for it i just bought it for a year because i thought i'd be looking for a while turns out it took me about three months no two months to to get this job um my first job in films another good site um both of these sites will flood your email inbox so maybe set up something uniquely for finding a job because it's such a pain having loads of emails come through and they're both very overwhelming. Um, but yeah, the, the opportunities on there are really great. Um, if you know you've got the experience to kind of uh, 
do a job as like in those assistant roles. I definitely put it down as I I'd use them more for running jobs um, in your first year just to get you on set or get you uh, in a post production house uh, or within a within a production production team. Um, I put on here Facebook because I basically asked everyone at work to kind of give uh, me advice to kind of share with you guys and every single one of them who's there started by uh, I'm talking about all the younger people so I'm talking about everyone kind of uh, they're all about 24 to I would say 27 at the moment they're all kind of like early stage of their career but they're kind of second AC so like they're on set they're doing they're doing the job um, and a couple of them I think three of them don't even have um, like much they didn't have much prior experience but then they decided that they were interested and what they did was mm -hmm. is they went through Facebook to just find any job or any even like if it was if it didn't pay well it was more about getting on set so the the Facebook um, groups where like they post loads of jobs can be very valuable to just kind of get yourself that experience after uni and you will be good enough to do those jobs like the runner jobs on there you will be good enough to do so definitely put yourself forward for those and just get the quantity don't worry about what you're working on just get the quantity of to onset experience because that will definitely bulk up that uh your cv and it will bulk up kind of your experience as well, which is just invaluable. Uh, put on small production companies. Oh yeah, the the kind of the <laughs> the time frames next to them is kind of how long it takes, in my opinion, for something to pay off. <laughs> so it's like with Facebook, it took about four to six months for of doing a few like odd jobs um, every month for my colleagues to kind of get recognized or to re-meet the same people or to get recommended. Small production companies is kind of like one to three years in my experience of kind of getting to that editing role. Uh, you know what I did with ad hoc films did take, it did take off quite quickly and then it was like after one or two years like if I wanted to specialize like that's how long it took. It took about two years to be able to do that. Post-production houses, it says I put one to two years to play it safe, but I know people who have done it, who have got in an edit suite as an edit assistant in six months, eight months um, after doing the terrible coffee runs. Uh, so that's definitely possible. And then two years, they within the two years, they kind of had their own specialist suite. But it's important to know that they had like the degree under their belt they studied hard before that so they knew what they were doing once they got, got themselves in that position they knew how to kind of make the most of it um the kit room uh you want if you want to get into camera this would be my highest recommendation because it's what i'm doing now and i can't describe how valuable it is because it's just it's really you know it's really blowing my mind at how much how much stuff i've learned in the small time i've been there but if you can find a kit room um, find a kit room that also sends out crew. So you want a kit room that hires out gear and cameras, but also sends out their own crew. Um, the company I'm with now, which does that, is called SNO, SNO Media. So that's, um, yeah, that's kind of where, where that is. So, um, yeah, so I put one to five years, because basically how, how my, the company works I'm with now, is that the first three months you're kind of just doing delivery so you're just driving um i think that's also very important you need i would get a driver's license if you could do anything in the year after uni if you don't have one get a driver's license uh it would just it will really help you so i would say that's step one like if you haven't got it already um but yeah working in the kit room uh first three months was driving then after that it was kind of like camera trainee which is what I've kind of just finished which is getting on set but you don't have any pressure to do much apart from like change batteries um, so yeah and then after that 
it's kind of like the next year or two, I will be doing second AC, working towards that first AC. But then by five years, like that four to five year mark, I should be able to specialize in either operating, focus pulling, or pushing for that kind of DOP role. It just really depends on kind of um, what I push for personally and what I establish myself as uh, within SNO, uh, within the kit room company. Um, so yeah, I just put those down as a kind of like, oh, freelance as well. I've, I've separated that entirely because it requires, if you are going, if you want to do it yourself and off your own back, which is completely viable. Um, I know people can be successful at, you know, running their own kind of production companies, making short films, getting budgets, um, making music videos for people, doing wedding videos. You can do that, but just, just know that the, the term freelance is you have to uh, supply the gear. Like that is what you, like if you were hired freelance, uh, you're expected to turn up with a certain amount of gear. Um, and that's why it's kind of like um, a big investment. So like if you, if you want to do that, you can definitely go down that route in that first kind of year to get yourself that experience. But it, it didn't it didn't work out as well for me as I thought it would. Uh, I did try it for a bit, but it was a lot of um, it was a lot of yeah, it required a lot of investment and a, a little while for it to pay off. Um, not to say that I still don't do the odd wedding video here and there because you know they pay well. Um, so if you've got the kit, um, if you've got a decent camera, some sound equipment, some lights, and you know you can you can make the most of that. But I just separated it because if you want to, if you want to use what you the knowledge you use that you need to, to do that, um, you can. It it is viable. Uni does teach you enough to do that, but it does kind of have its ceiling where you want to be. There will come a time when you want to specialize and be able to build a craft and kind of want to really push yourself to to be more than just a, a videographer. Like if if you have the same kind of attitude that I think uni kind of helps you specialize in in cinematography or uh, directing, like there will be a time where videography might not be what you want to do. And it's very difficult to then take the step back to do it the way the industry works after you've been so successful doing it on your own. It's just a lot harder personally to do that. But kind of even if you've been a successful freelancer, unless you have established contacts which can get you the work, in the role you want, you kind of have to take a step back, um, which is always tricky. But that's not to say that you shouldn't go for it, because if you're confident in your own ability to do that, then I would definitely recommend, yeah, recommend going for it. Uh, where are we now? Oh yeah, so I, I just noted down kind of, <laughs> kind of how uh, terrible this first job could be. Uh, I put down coffee, batteries, loading, unloading kit, labeling, ingesting, logging. I put multidiscipline just because you will be getting stuck in everywhere, especially if you're going for those smaller production companies. Um, but I would say just take the hit for the year. Like it's a year where like I would definitely recommend just not worrying about what you're working on as long as you're around the right people. So I, I won't repeat myself too much on this stuff, but basically that first job will be will feel like you're taking a step back from where you were at uni because I'm sure you're all making great stuff and uh, enjoying yourselves. So it's, it, it is a bit of a hit to then go back to you will be starting your career when you leave. So just remember that it will be a bit crap to begin with because you will be doing those jobs that, you know, other people in the industry have worked to move on from. So you kind of got to use it to learn other skills, use it to talk to the right people um, and make sure people know that you want the work. Um, and by doing the crap jobs, people know that you want the work. And I think um, once you get yourself in that position, you can people will know your value and your skills that you've learned at uni um, and you then can push for those more creative roles. Uh, where am I? I kind of covered this, uh, but yeah, I'm basically, 
I transitioned from being a an editor to the point where when I left Ad Hoc Films uh, late last year, I was I was applying for jobs both to specialize as an editor um, and my jobs, the jobs I were offered is uh, my, I was basically left after ad hoc films with, I can either go down the route of um, specializing as an avid editor, which is like a really a high end editing software. Um, and that's something that because I pushed so far within ad hoc films that I got the opportunity to work on their documentary side. Um, so I got to work on uh, Avid, which meant that I, it just opened a whole other, a whole other world of editing opportunities. So I basically got offers with Sky. I got offers with um, a lot of broadcast companies and drama, like drama company or drama editors. Um, but the the problem I often found is that no one was willing to kind of mentor me a bit. I was kind of in this place where I knew I was good enough to push for like the that specialized editing role, but um, I really wanted someone to just show me how to do the job in like an industry way. Because um, uh, up until that point, coming from a smaller production company, um, it was always about getting the job done. So like I could get the job done, but it just felt like there was a better way of doing the job. And I, no one had shown me that. Um, especially as I was learning Avid on the job. So for me personally, I ended up turning down the bigger, uh, the, the larger companies like Sky um, because I didn't want, also a lot of those opportunities were like based in sport because the company I was with worked in a lot of sport. So I was like, I don't really want to pigeonhole myself into just following the money and going for, for Sky or anyone like that because I will just be doing the job but I won't be like actually building a craft so I, I decided to go a different route take the opportunity while I'm you know still young to retrain and just get another load of skills under my belt and I kind of took a step back went into a kit room um, with SNO but the difference was is I chose SNO because they were willing to teach me as I as I was kind of saying briefly before, like this is just, I was, this is just notes from, I just got, like they have a whole notebook thing. And it's like, they're willing to train you. They want you to succeed. Then they know that within three to five years, you will be moving on. And they kind of are set up in that way to keep people coming through the door. They have a good network. Um, so I've got a bullet point here just on the last bit. It's like, you know, how does this compare to where I thought I'd be? And <laughs> I won't lie, when, when I was, when I entered university, I really thought that it would be a case of, you know, I will just make a great short film and then someone will see it, they take me under their wing and, you know, I'll, I'll hopefully be at least on features by the, by the time a couple of years after uni. Um, it's not the case. However, I do see that getting on features and dramas is now more of an opportunity than ever because I'm meeting people who are in those avenues by doing the kit room stuff and I'm learning skills that I can take to any industry or any, any part of our industry. So I can do dramas, I can do documentaries, I can do commercials um, because we work with all of them and it's just about focusing on I'm now focusing on on a, on a craft um, more than kind of how my career looks <laughs> I would say I'm not going to like try to get the best looking um, job it's more about what I think I can actually take from it